Southern Conference game tonight. The Northern Division lead at stake as East Tennessee takes on Davidson. Let's quickly check the starters for tonight's game. For the visiting Buccaneers, Titus Shelton, the freshman, gets the start along with Phil Powell at 6'7". Tony Patterson, the 6'9", senior from Flatley in the middle. Robert Doggett, who's not been starting, the transfer from Wake Forest, starts in place of the freshman Randy Sanders, who has a, an injured so, uh, shoulder. And for, uh, also in the backcourt, Jeff Herman, number 23 to God. I said Randy Sanders. It's Randy Dodson. Buccaneers are happy to have this guy back. He had an allergic reaction to some medicine Saturday. Missed the team's loss against VMI on Saturday night. For the Davidson Wildcats, they'll start this way. Quinn Harwood hit a big three-pointer with four seconds to go to help his team beat Appalachian State on the road on Saturday. Brandon Williams, one of the top players in the conference at the other forward. George Spain, 6'8", 250, a senior in the middle. He takes up a lot of room. The backcourt, Chris Alpert and Jeff Anderson. For Bob McKillop, Southern Conference Coach of the Year, sixth season at Davidson. They're 12-9 and nine coming into this one. And a game behind East Tennessee State in the Northern Division standings. Bob McKillop's defensive team leads the league in scoring defense versus Allen LaForce's offensive machine. Patterson. Classic, classic battle. It is. It's going to be a good one. Patterson and Spain jump, and the Wildcats control the basketball. They've got it first. Chris Alpert. Now, the, the Wildcats will readily admit they miss Yanko Naritz outside shooter. And Zimmerman from last year's team, and they haven't shot the three-pointer as well as they did last year. Buccaneers come up with a steal as Davison tries to go inside, so the Bucks have the basketball early. No score just underway from Davidson. Shoots from 12 and misses. Spain with a rebound. Quick shot by Patterson. That's his game. If he gets it to go down, he's capable of a big night. You only have to hope that they're not going down. He doesn't shoot as much. Albert off the pick for Williams. Misses the long shot, and Jeff Herman gets the long rebound. The lob to Powell, who almost lost it. Titus Shelton, who can hit the three. This is the Patterson who gives East Tennessee State a 2 0 lead. East Tennessee State likes the dribble penetration and kick out. At that time, Patterson was wide open. He had a clean, clear look at the hoop. Davidson's lost a couple of games in a row here at home, and George Spain's turnaround ties this thing at two. That's Spain's game. He's got a nice hands. He catches, doesn't put it on the floor where he can lose it, and gets rid of it quickly. They look for Patterson, can't find him. Tennessee, a lot of patience. Defensively, Davidson has been playing very well. There's a lob to Patterson, who got it to run out of. And the rebound goes to Quinn Harwood. Neither team getting any seconds. Spain is clobbered. He'll draw two shots. The foul going against Robert Doggett of East Tennessee State. That's the first foul on Doggett. First team foul on East Tennessee. Could have just as easily been Tony Patterson. Patterson and Doggett both back defensively. But Doggett gets Spain from behind. I've got a little trivia for you, Randy. How many three-pointers, excuse me, left-handers on this Davidson team? On the floor currently or on the team? This is an unusual team. I would say at least three. How many? But there really are. There's three. three and there's four on the team. Unusual. That many left-handers on one ball team. A little story behind that. We'll talk about it later. 4-2. Davidson with the first lead. Powell had his shot rejected by Harwood, but saves it. Jeff Herman, who hits better than 41% from the three-point line, passed up an open three. Bob McKillop. McKillop has been very pleased with the defensive job done by Davidson over the last couple weeks. Shelton misses the shot, and another rebound for Quinn Harwood. That's off the hands of East Tennessee State. Davidson gets it back now with 17.44 to go here in the first half. Alan LaForce has to really be pushing his team at this time of the year to hold on to this lead they have in the Northern Division and also bring their defensive skills around heading into tournament time. Brandon Williams makes it a four-point Davidson lead at 6-2.
Six straight points for the Wildcats. Phil Powell, a charge. He used his hand to push Harwood away, and the offensive foul gives Davidson the ball. Well, Harwood was the hero Saturday afternoon at Appalachian State, but Quinn Harwood moves over very quick. He anticipates, cuts off Powell, no question. Good heads up play by Harwood. 6-2, Davidson with the lead, 17-14 to go here in the first half. Early, earlier in the year, Davidson had been going inside almost exclusively in the last month or so. They've really brought their outside game around. They have a lot of confidence in the perimeter game now. Harwood down the middle, the left-hand shot misses, and how the rebound. Well, he got to the rim, got to finish that one. Jeff Herman. They whip it around the horn. They're looking for Patterson on every possession and away from the ball of foul against Davidson. George Spain guilty of the foul. George Spain moves out on the floor defensively. Typically, he guards people in and around the paint, the neighborhood. That time, he was brought out on the floor and it struggled with his hands. Davidson 5-0 against Northern Division teams this year. They win a lot here, but they've lost a couple in a row, including last Monday here at home by nine to UT Chattanooga. Patterson puts it in, and it's a two-point Davidson lead. Excellent pass that time. Excellent pass. And Patterson had positioned himself on the baseline. Davidson did not react quick enough. Alpert works off the pick. Doggett's got it. Down low to fix Spain. Up and over Patterson, and it's 8-4. Davidson with the lead. Nice patience that time. Pump fake. Didn't put the ball on the floor. Shelton to Patterson. Patterson's 15-footer. Two hawks. Doggett hustled and got the rebound. Well, the first seconds we've seen in a while, Randy. Both teams have done a good job eliminating the seconds until then. Nice fake and the shot by Doggett. Look at Titus Shelton follow it inside, and the rebound finally comes down to Harwood. He may have already about five rebounds. Williams for three. One and done for the Wildcats. He's going to see not a good rebounding team, Randy, but they really held their own and some early in this ballgame. Very athletic team as East Tennessee State. Jeff Herman drops it back to Powell. It goes out of bounds and another turnover. Turnovers have really hurt this East Tennessee State team this year. They really have their turnover to assist ratio, not probably what their coach would like. Timeout, 15-15 to go. We'll be back. Chris Alpert, bounce pass away from the defender, Spain. He does a good job. Why, Randy? Because he didn't put it on the floor. He didn't bring the ball down where the little guys can play. Utilized his size. Has a nice touch. One of the leading field goal percentage shooters in the conference. East Tennessee with a little trap. Back door is Harwood. Patterson didn't want to foul him. Harwood got the bucket. Nice skip passes by the Wildcats of Davidson. Whenever you can keep the ball off the floor and in the air, you can whip a half-court defense. 10-4, six-point game. They go to Patterson. There's the shot from the corner by Doggett. Misses a long three. Alpert quickly up to Finley, who tried to hit Harwood. The pass went between his hands out of bounds. Now, Ray Minlin met well that time, but Yogi Berra couldn't have caught that fastball. Trust me. <laughs> the big guy, Harwood, had no chance. There was not enough distance between passer and, and, and catcher, receiver and quarterback. Not even with a catcher's mid. No, not Yogi. That. Yogi would have passed on that one. <laughs> also checking in Mark McGuire, 6'10 junior from St. Louis. Brandon Williams back in the ball game. Ray Midland's a sophomore. Excellent defender. Good, good on-ball defender. And a travel against Justin McClellan. It was just in the ball game for East Tennessee State. Boy, these turnovers are really hurting East Tennessee. You, you really, as a coach, and Coach LaForce, I'm sure, would agree that turnovers will kill you, and, and excess of turnovers will get you beat. But when you get on the road, you don't want to play hesitant, but you really have to take care of the ball and watch what you're doing. East Tennessee's turned it three times, two for Davidson. Corey Johnson also in the game now for the Buccaneers. They go to McGuire. 
McGuire. Swanson goes to pick McGuire, and his shot rejected. And Midland puts it in in front. It's a 12-4 Davidson lead. And Midland opens the bank this afternoon. There's a steal from Brandon Williams. Another turnover, East Tennessee State. Scramble for it on the floor. And the jump ball gives it to East Tennessee State. Number 34 in the ball game is Narcisse Iwoto. Also call him Cisco. I believe I'll call him Cisco too the rest of the night. Brandon Williams that time put a fastball on Cisco and he just quite couldn't handle it. Once that ball gets down on the floor, it's anybody's and you lose your advantage of size. Justin McClellan underneath missed it, but Phil Powell is there to tip it in. That's the first bucket in a while for East Tennessee State. That's what Phil Powell does well. He's a put-back guy, goes to the boards, very athletic for his size. Iwodo almost had it knocked loose twice. He got it back, missed the shot, Powell the rebound. Corey Johnson with a quick three. Well, you said that right. That trigger was cocked and gone. The ball was gone. Iwodo with a layup, and it's a 14-6 Davidson lead. Iwodo runs very well, Randy. He's thin, but he's very quick. He has long arms, gets up and down like a deer. Looks a little like Manute Bowl, except he's about two feet short. He wishes he had about uh, <laughs> all of Bowl's size, I'm sure. Junior Floyd from out front. This is the long three. Iwodo the rebound. Medlin got Junior Floyd off his feet. Goes to McGuire, who missed the lane. Well, took time to check it for air, put the ball on the floor. Not a good thing to do inside. Titus Shelton with a baseline drive. Missed the shot, but he's there to follow. Good move by the freshman, Titus Shelton. Now that's what the Bucks have to do. They've been one and done so much here in the first half. They need some seconds and thirds. And a foul against Chris Alpert of Davidson, or rather Corey Johnson of David of East Tennessee. I'll get it right in a minute. George Spain comes back in for Mark McGuire, who gave Bob McKillop some quality minutes off the bench. And you got a chance to rest the leading field goal percentage shooter in the conference, and George Spain is at 66%. He got off to a real good start. They got him out of the blocks early. Now he's going to go back in. Let's see if they don't try to direct maybe this offense into the big fella a couple times here at the low post. Williams takes the inbound. 12.04 to go here in the first half. Ray Minlin. Minlin at the point, giving Alpert a break. This is a little different look from what Davidson typically gives you because Alpert plays so many minutes. Wodo way away from the basket. Good ball movement by Davidson, but now they're down to seven on the shot clock. I think without Alpert, they struggle to get into their offense. Brandon Williams takes it down to the two-second mark and buries the little 10-footer. Now that's what a basketball player does when you're the best or the best is expected of you when things get tight you take over and you get something done and Williams did exactly that Justin McClellan inside out to Corey Johnson bang he hit a three Corey Johnson who just happens to be the all-time leader in high school basketball with 232 career three-point shots he did that at Hardin County High in Tennessee and he had an arm transplant after his high school career. That's a lot of shooting. That's how many he made. A lot of kids made. don't even attempt that. Now kids don't dream that many. Out of bounds. He would have lost it, threw it away. It's a five-point lead, and East Tennessee State fighting back. They've got the ball. 10.51 to go here in the first half. We'll be back in just a moment. Davidson take them to the offensive end in transition. Alpert, the point guard, is the trigger man most of the time for the Davidson Wildcats. Nice finish at the basket. No one back for East Tennessee. Now, at the other end of the floor, East Tennessee State likes the three-pointer. They shoot about 38% on the year. They need to make at least 38 to 40 here this evening to win this ballgame. Bucks with the basketball. They were down eight a moment ago. 
Three point shots, one out of four for East Tennessee. Davidson 0 for 1. That shot off the glass, no good. And here we go the other way. Davidson showed zone that time for the first sequence defensively. May well change on occasion, but like the main event. Spain muscles it up, no good. The rebound to Dog. East Tennessee State runs. McClellan could not handle the pass to Dog. And Williams finishes it at the other end. That pass was just too tough to handle. It was, it was a very, very tough pass, and it led directly back for the Wildcats to a hoop. And the Bucks have to be careful with that. And Delane McClellan tried to feed Powell and threw it right into the hands of a very quick Brandon Williams. Defensively, Davidson really collapsing inside. Really no avenue to make that pass that time. 46 to go off the pick Midland. And a foul, a reaching in foul against Justin McClellan of East Tennessee State. Midland filling in at the point guard for Chris Alpert, doing a very adequate job. Alpert coming back in. Alpert plays about 33 minutes a game, Randy. He's the key at the point for Bob McKillop. Midland that time did a good job. Got things going, labored a little bit, but hung right in there. Jeff Anderson back in the ball game now. He's got the ball out front. Another one of those left-handers. There's Alpert. Dropped it to Spain, who muscled it up and in over Powell and Doggett. Four lefties in the game right now for Davidson. Corey Johnson deployed for an open three. He missed it. Patterson saves it. East Tennessee will take another crack at it. They're down nine. East Tennessee needs to get big Patterson involved. He's their leading scorer. Blocking foul against Chris Alpert. Junior Floyd draws the foul for East, T East Tennessee. Davidson in a zone again. The last three times down the floor, they've played a zone against Coach Allen, the forces Bucks, and really have gotten some turnovers, some cheap baskets out of play in that zone. Floyd will inbound for the Buccaneers after we do a little housekeeping. Jeff Herman will check in at the next opportunity for East Tennessee State. Patterson in the lane. Missed the shot. Patterson struggled shooting the ball tonight. Boy, he had point blank range that time also. Anderson hit in the eye. Corey Johnson ducks at 5-9 for East Tennessee State. And Anderson caught a finger in the eye. And that scramble as the Bucks knocked it loose near midcourt. An unintentional finger in the eye. That hurts too. You, never know it you don't ever know when it's coming and I'll tell you what, that's smart. Corey Johnson got the ball and got the dunk at 5-9. He can get up. There's quite a crowd around the ball. Patterson from behind. Corey Johnson from the front. Corey Johnson reaches in and accidentally gets a hold of Jeff Anderson's eye. Ah, he should have been in the uh, slam dunk <laughs> uh, football players contest. Here's another angle as we look and they caught Patterson's arm. Wasn't a finger, just kind of the inside of Patterson's arm caught him in the eye. Probably wishes he wouldn't have pulled up off that dribble. Pretty tough to pull out at, at half court and not run into somebody and he just got caught in the crowd. I tell you that dunk that Johnson came up with a moment ago was probably every bit as good as any I saw in the NBA dunk contest this weekend. <laughs> He, uh, he was getting, he was moving, he was getting <laughs> up, was he not? He was. He doesn't get any cash, though, for that no, one. No, he doesn't. Jeff Anderson's going to be okay. He's going to sit down for a while. Ray Midland will check back in for him. Here's Corey Johnson's dunk again. But there, is, there are no cards going up on this dunk. At home, he probably would have gotten a rating. <laughs> not here. The only thing going up was Corey Johnson that time. It's a seven-point game with 8.49 to go. Turnovers. The points, Davidson 8-2 to two so far. And rebounding, Davidson has done a very good job of keeping East Tennessee State off the glass. East Tennessee, a very aggressive team. Spain misses the little 10-footer, and it got the shooter's roll and bounds back in for it. He shoots 66% on the year. He's got a soft touch. You can't let him have the ball. Doggett. 
This time couldn't escape Harwood, who got the layup. And Davidson's lead is 11. That's their biggest of this half. Davidson in a little pressing full court situation. They don't really try to steal it and do a lot of things one on one and strip you of the ball, but they want to cause confusion, Randy. They want to use the clock and have someone take a shot that normally wouldn't. Bill Powell. This is the dunk. Gets it up and in finally. Good second effort that time by Powell. Powell showed persistence. On the block to Spain. And He's just not missing anything, is he? Somebody needs to get a hold of Tony Patterson, get a wake-up call to that young man because Spain's walking right down the floor and establishing whatever position he wants. Junior Floyd with a big three for the Buccaneers. That was a big one, too, because that answered a lot of baskets by Davidson that went unanswered. Out of bounds. The Bucks forced the turnover with 7.27 to go. Here in the first half, we'll take another timeout. Bucks have cut it to eight. They've got the ball when we come back with 7.27 left here in the first half. Moment, we'll remind you of the announcers for and approved by Sports South and the Southern Conference. Any use we broadcast or other transmission without the written consent of Sports South, the Southern Conference, and Creative Productions is prohibited. Quinn Harwood, the hero from Saturday afternoon's win at Appalachian State with a three-pointer. He's on the front part of the press because of his size. He's a left-hander, finishes strong, shows no ball, goes body first, but big George. Gorgeous George, five for six, Randy, shooting 66% from the field. If you're guarding him, you have to pray that he doesn't touch the ball. You have to try to deny him any sort of good position where he can turn and use that left hand. Leads the Southern Conference in field goal accuracy. He's got 12 points. His teammates have 14. And he's he is happy camper at this point for this in this ball game, is he not? And he's fourth nationally in field goal percentage, and that's going to go up if he keeps this up. You know, it's tough to guard left-handers, and Coach Bob McKillop and I talked this morning about it. He likes to bring left-handers on his team. He really recruits them enthusiastically because he thinks they do everything different than what the average defender is used to, which is a right-handed player. So he has his team spot with lefties. There's the dunk by Phil Powell, who got the one he missed a moment ago. If you took Phil Powell's offense out of this game, East Tennessee would really, really be struggling. Doggett. Oh. Alpert got around Doggett and went to the other side for the layup. It's an eight-point Davidson lead again. The Bucks had cut it to six. Chris Alpert, no one wanted him. I wouldn't say no one, but he walked on at Davidson. Come quite a fine for a walk-on, huh? Sure has from Muttontown, New York. 25 to go here in the first half. They go to Patterson. He couldn't handle it. It's off the hands, though, of Davidson, and the Bucks get it back with 11 ticks left on the shot clock. George Spain defensively really was working his tail off at the low post. He was wrapping around denying position to Tony Patterson, probably something Tony Patterson should do to him. Junior Floyd, two for two from behind the arc, and it's a five-point game. And we said earlier during the open that three-pointer for the East Tennessee State Bucks could keep them in or shoot them out of this game. Right now, it's making it a much closer ball game. A pushing foul against Jeff Herman as Midland made his move to the buckets. You know, the Bucks have got 23 points. Almost half of their points have come off the bench in the form of two players. Floyd with six and Corey Johnson with five. Well, just goes to show you that uh, the old cliche, short bench, long bench, he hasn't played a lot of people, but the ones that Coach LaFour has put in have produced. Under six minutes to go, quick turnaround by Harwood. He made it look easy as he went over how and off the glass. Seven-point game. Junior Floyd, who's hit a couple of big threes for East Tennessee State. Davidson out of the zone now. They're switching. They stayed with it through about four or five sequences and did a good job. Floyd, great feed to Herman, who missed the layup, but a shoving foul against Ray Midland. 
Is that going to be before the Yeah, they're going to give him two shots for Jeff Herman. Let's take another look. A lot of action under the basket. A lot of movement. Bodies flying everywhere. Midland comes over the top. Probably not a bad foul, but whenever you get behind someone with the ball, referees assume that once you reach, that you're fouling. Jeff Herman misses the first free throw. Herman, who is averaging over 11 points a game, is yet to score. Titus Shelton in the ball game now for East Tennessee State, replacing Phil Powell, who has played awfully well. He really has, and he's been the whole deal offensively. He's been the real deal for the Bucks and Coach Allen on the first this afternoon. The second one is good for Herman. His first points, the six-point game. Davidson with the lead in the ball. Across the court, they go to Jeff Anderson. Harwood with a fake down the lane, rejected beautifully, but a foul on the rebound. I believe Junior Floyd got a hand up and deflected that shot by Harwood. That time, the Bucks reacted defensively. They had quite a few blue shirts moving over, trying to pick up the penetration. Count them. They've got two or three blue shirts over there, and it was Floyd, but McGuire slipped in the back door. He did what you should do when that happens. Follow, get in the draft, the back draft of the penetration. Somebody can lay it back to you, or if it's a missed shot, you got a chance for a putback. The worst thing you can do is stand and spectate. He did not do that. McGuire misses the first free throw. The foul was on Tony Patterson of East Tennessee State, his first. McGuire, one out of two. He makes the back end, and it's a seven-point Davidson lead with five minutes to go here in the half. Davidson, seven of eight, Randy. Seven of the last eight they've converted. Titus Shelton drops it to Patterson, who had it rejected by Brandon Williams. Now you know why they call him Ozone. Now that was an athletic move right there defensively. That's twice Alford has beaten Doggett to the basket. Off the hands of Davidson, East Tennessee gets it back, and just like that, Davidson's lead is nine. Brandon Williams was involved in that situation on the sideline right in front of us. He deflected the ball out. He knocked it out. Earlier, he blocked the shot, resulted in a two-point basket for Chris Alpert. This young man plays both ends of the floor, does he not? Sure does. Doggett works on Alpert. Ball the block to Patterson. Patterson turns and misses the rebound. Harwood has another one. Offensively, it's dried up for Tony Patterson in this first half. 33-24. Davidson with a nine-point lead. Their biggest lead has been 11. The follow by McGuire. Off the miss by Williams, and just like that, the Cats have equal their biggest lead of the ballgame. McGuire hanging around again. Gets his second straight offensive putback. Shelton to Patterson this time. Tony Patterson doesn't miss. Titus Shelton unselfishly moved that ball. Good-looking freshman. He and Randy Dotson, the other freshman. The Bucks went on a five-game winning streak at one point, and they did it with those freshmen in the lineup. Well, Coach LaForce, he has to look at it and say that uh, I can get these youngsters all the playing time that I can now because at tournament time, I want them to be sophomores. Ten seconds on the shot clock. They collapse on McGuire. He's going to move on Patterson, but he walked. McGuire, the big 6'10", 240-pound junior, with a floor mistake, and the Bucks are going to fight back in this one, but we'll take a timeout first with 3.31 to go. It's a nine-point wildcat lead when we come back to Davidson. Elvis Presley turns to sender. Brandon Williams returns this shot to the sender. It's right out of there. Take it out of my neighborhood, Tony Patterson. Chris Alpert, the left-hander, no one plays him on his left hand. He converts easily. Both teams going to their bench quite a bit. Checking in now for the Wildcats is number four, Billy Armstrong, who's a freshman. Andy Waddles back in. Davidson back in the zone that bothered the Bucks for about four or five trips down the floor. Let's see how they handle it this time. Oh. Junior Floyd, that's how they handle it. Three out of three from three-point range. That will bring you out of a zone or at least make Coach McKillop consider coming out of that zone if another one goes down. Six-point game, 3.04 to go in the half. Almost a steal by Floyd, who's played awfully well. Then he drew the charge against Iwoto. 
Well, Floyd's giving him a pop off the bench, Randy, and that's what you want. Coach, Coach LaForce, he goes to his bench, and you want somebody to make something happen off the bench, and you can make something happen at either end of the floor. He gets the knockout, the deflection, then he has good position and takes the charge. He's making something happen. Nine points for Floyd, all from the three-point line. Bucks have been close to cutting into this lead, and tying it up, but not close enough. Seems like they get it to five or six. Davidson will be back out by nine or 11. There's a good start. East Tennessee successful from the perimeter, haven't got much going inside. Look who came up with a steal, Junior Floyd. He will not go to that bench. The better he plays, the longer he'll be out here. Doggett for three, swish, he hit it. It's a one-point game. The Buccaneers are on a 10-point roll right here. They were down by 11 a couple of minutes ago, and Coach McKillop wants to take a 20-second timeout. Just a little momentum breaker. Try to cool the opposition down. Bob McKillop probably talking with his team right now. Hey, we need a good shot. He and I talked earlier this morning, and he thought the improvement offensively for his Wildcat was because that they took their time and got the ball to the right guy, the right spot on the floor. But defensively, they've given up a lot of things to East Tennessee State from the perimeter, and East Tennessee State has capitalized. Inside, they haven't scored. But outside, they've done a good job of knocking down the jumper. The Bucks have gotten three-pointers from three different players. They're on a 10-0 run to make it a one-point game with 2.14 to go. Floyd's got three. Johnson and Doggett each have one. This will be a defined play from that 20-second timeout for the Davidson Wildcats. McGuire's in there. Almost a steal. Iwodo rejected by Patterson, but he walked. Iwodo seems to be a guy in a hurry out there, Randy. He just seems to possibly be a step or two ahead of himself. He needs to slow it down, take his time. George Spain back in the ballgame. Who would you get the ball to now? If you're East Tennessee. You got to go to Florida. You got to go. You got to go. Football coach told me one time, so you got a popsicle, lick it. Or dance with the one that brung you, right? Right. There is a foul against George Spain of Davidson. Now Spain has gotten two fouls in his ball game when he's moved out on the floor defensively. Coach Bob McKillop doesn't want to see this young man spend a lot of the second half beside him. He got one on the wing and he got one up top guarding Tony Patterson. Back off Patterson out there. There's no sense to put pressure on Patterson. He hasn't been hot offensively. I'd make you put on the floor and Alan LaForce wants one of those 20-second timeouts. What's been the reaction from coaches you've talked to about having that extra 20-second deal? I think the coaches have realized, they've called, they've made, uh, had discussions with NBA people and talked among themselves. They're starting now to, to really utilize that 20-second in the right manner. It's a good momentum breaker. If you want to call a certain play at a certain time, it's a good time to do it. Your team is laboring, and the right guy doesn't have the ball. You should have a look at Bob McKillop, what he's done at Davidson College since he took over. And he's brought this program a long ways. Four and 24. That was his first season, 89-90. In the last four, 69 and 67. And missed going to the NCAA by two points last year. They've lost to UT Chattanooga, the team that has won two straight tournament championships. And speaking of that tournament, it's going to be a real Donnybrook in Asheville first weekend in March. Doggett, look at Floyd go to the hoop. That's his first two-point bucket. He's got 11 for East Tennessee, and the Bucks have their first lead of the ball game since early. They led two nothing. Thanks to Junior Floyd. Davidson laboring for a good shot. They need it bad. Rejected by Titus Shelton. Into the hands of Junior Floyd, who is from nearby Gastonia, North Carolina. Got some folks here. Return to sender. That was, there was no shot at all. Titus was all over Harwood. Doggett penetrates, drops it to Patterson, who's open. Missed the shot. Floyd with a rebound. Two or three fakes. He's got his 13th point, and the Bucks have a three-point lead. 
Well, if you're a Bucks fan, you have to say a little prayer at halftime that Junior Floyd stays hot. Spain with a quick turnaround. That'll end the drought for him. You go to the guy that is leading the conference and fourth in the country in field goal percentage. What amazed me, the defender didn't even have a hand on him. This guy is quite a shooter on the year, and he's hot as he could be right now. Hey, you got to get a hand on him. He's got 14. Junior Floyd's got 13 to lead everybody in this first half. Either you get a hand on him or you get embarrassed, one of the two, defensively. Bucks are going to try to milk it down. There's about a one-second differential in the shot clock and the game clock. Doggett had it rejected into the hands of Harwood with three seconds. Harwood all the way. Missed the shot, and East Tennessee State's going to have the lead at halftime. After trailing by 11 points on two different occasions in the first half, the Bucks have fought back mainly on the play of Junior Floyd off the bench. The broad shoulders. He scores from the outside. He had enough perspective on the game to get some putbacks. He was all over the place, Randy. 38-37, your score. Buccaneers lead the Wildcats, and we'll be back with halftime activities for you in a moment. Let's look at Stanton. Pretty good. 38-37, Bucks lead. Davidson hitting 61% from the floor, but the big edge in the game, uh, Mike, is 5 out of 9 from behind the three-point line for East Tennessee. Davidson 0 for 1. That is a big edge, Randy, but I think the percentages reflect where the shots were taken from. Davidson much better at getting inside shots. East Tennessee shooting from the perimeter. Rebounds just about even. Turnovers, a slight edge. Davidson turned it over more than we really thought. Points in the paint, 18 to 14. And if East Tennessee State, with a one-point lead, expects to come out on top of this, where they're going to have to do a better job of interior defense. Well, East Tennessee State also got 18 points off their bench, 13 from Junior Floyd. The question is, can Junior Floyd continue at that pace? Can Davidson find somebody to stop him? Because you know he'll be back in that game very quickly for Coach Allen LaForce. Same starting fives for both teams. Davidson gets the ball to start the second half. East Tennessee State opening up in the zone. I believe that's the first time we've seen that from the Bucks this evening. Anderson open and he got the jumper. That'll bring you out of it very quickly. Good ball movement that time. It didn't touch the floor, didn't stay long in anybody's hands. It found the open man. Patterson squares up off the glass and in. Tony Patterson in the first half, 3 of 10 from the floor. He struggled. He hits his first one. That was big. Showed no lack of confidence or struggling. Any carryover from the first half. Brandon Williams misses the three. The rebound to Harwood. Harwood over Patterson. Missed it. The rebound to Jeff Herman. Davidson only got three offensive rebounds in the first half. That was a big offensive rebound even though they didn't convert got him off on the right foot Bill Powell with the basketball East Tennessee State with a one point lead and now a four point lead as Robert Doggett buries his second three East Tennessee still staying on the perimeter even though Patterson scored early here in the second half from inside Doggett not afraid to pull the trigger from three point lane Doggett kicked the basketball. They'll reset the shot clock with 18.25 to go here in the ball game. If Davidson can convert uh, from the outside, Coach Bob McKillop may, his team may be able to bring East Tennessee out of that zone if they knock a couple more of those three-pointers down. Jeff Anderson will inbound the ball when we finally get back to business here. Alfred's got it. There's Spain. The zone collapse on him. Brandon Williams misses and Powell the rebound. That zone has been affected. That's what the zone does. It has a tendency to eliminate seconds and thirds if played right. Doggett tried to feed Patterson and Harwood is going over Patterson's back for the foul. Doggett was lucky that Harwood was just a half a beat off because he throws the ball on the defender's side. If you look, the defender's on the left side. The ball comes on the left side. Doggett gets his hand in there. He doesn't feel that there was much of a foul, but uh, he doesn't have a whistle. 
Under 18 minutes to go. There's the back lob to Titus Shelton. And he goes up and over Spain and Harwood. And the Buccaneers of East Tennessee have a six-point lead. Nice shot that time from behind the glass. He really had to, to move his body out to even get that get thing close to the hoop. Harwood puts it on the floor. The foul before the shot against East Tennessee. I think it's going to be on Jeff Herman. No, it's on Patterson. It's tough to put the ball in the floor, on the floor, in the middle of that zone. The zone will collapse. Harwood quick three, misses Powell with a rebound. Davidson has only scored two points in the first two and a half minutes of this second half. They really don't look like they're into the game right now. They're not off the track by any stretch of the imagination. Dog it open for three. Bang! He hit it. Dog gets off. He's off and out of the shoot, is he not? He's made three threes. A 20-second timeout for East Tennessee. Or was it was it Davidson? I believe it was. A 20-second timeout. Doggett has made three, Floyd three, and Corey Johnson has made one as the Bucks are filling it up from outside. Coach LaForce just talking to his players now and saying, hey, look, what we're doing now is good. It's been good to us late in the second half. Stay with it. Don't get too excited. Just keep the ball moving. Find the guy with the hot hand. And Doggett is the guy with the hot hand. The ball finds him. Not bashful. Bombs away. East Tennessee State on the year hitting 37% from the three-point line. That's pretty darn good. Davidson now will be playing man-to-man. -man. They've got to find Doggett. They've got to find Powell. And make sure that those guys don't get the ball at will. Alfred's long three, too hard. Anderson blocked out well and had the rebound. Get big George Spain off the board that time. Tennessee by nine. They've got the ball. 16.48 to go. Jeff Herman with it. East Tennessee being very patient. Alpert all over Robert Doggett. Not going to let him breathe an inch, are they? And then there's an offensive foul against. Robert Doggett, who slapped Alfred in the face, they called the foul on Doggett, but Doggett was complaining that Alfred was grabbing his jersey. Let's take a look. Robert Doggett is being dogged by Chris Alfred. Chris has a hold of the shirt. Yeah, he does. He swats him away. Pop scene. Good, little, little good frustration. Bit of acting too. Good, a little yeah. bit of acting. Uh, frustration on both sides. Alfred grabs the shirt. Doggett slaps the face. George Bain, they converge on him. He muscles it up. Yes, count it. And the foul against East Tennessee State. Big George, very effective inside, Randy. He pivots well. He utilizes his body. He utilizes one dribble. Look at the footwork. One dribble to get the shot. And I tell you, the old left hand, Bob McKillop and I talked this morning about left-handers. And that time, Tony Patterson went for a shot he thought was going to be released by a right-hander. Spain came through with the left hand. He got a good look. Six-point game, a three-point play by George Spain, who now is hit seven out of eight from the floor. Dog, there's the lob and the jam to Phil Powell. Once bitten and twice shy, right? I tell you, Powell, he's got the ability athletically to play up there on the rim. That's twice we've seen the lob to Powell. Eight-point East Tennessee State lead. There they go to their big guy, and it's slapped out of his hands by Herman from behind. This zone has really worked for the Bucks. It's turned this game around defensively for them here early in the second half. East Tennessee State leading by eight. They trail by 11 on two different occasions in the first half. Put on a real run and took a one-point lead at intermission. Dog had his shot rejected by Anderson, and he got it back. Dog again, off balance. A foul. Doggett will draw two shots. The foul on Davidson's Jeff Anderson. Jeff Anderson, one of Davidson's best on-ball defenders, if not the best, and he's assigned a job of checking Robert Doggett, who's had the hot hand. He does a good job until there, and you have to credit Doggett for knowing the shot clock. Look where he got in the paint, Randy, and drew the foul. So heads-up play by Robert Doggett. 
Free throw is good by Doggett, who, by the way, of the year, good foul shooter, 74%. East Tennessee is a team not very good, 66%. 12 points on the night for Doggett. One out of two, though. Iwoto makes the board clean for Davidson. A blocking foul against Robert Doggett. He draws the block against Alfred. He was there. He worked hard for that. He jumped on the left hand of Chris Alpert. Alpert got away with one maybe there. We'll take a look when we come back. 15-10 to go. Timeout. East Tennessee by nine. Well, the only thing better than a layup is the dunk. And Phil Powell is two for two from Dunkville. Excellent pass right on top of the rim, Randy. You couldn't have placed it better than that. Makes it easy. That's one reason the Bucks are shooting 83%. Oh, have they Four. been hot? Listen, they uh, they had a good halftime, huh? They did. That zone has really bothered Davidson. They collapse on Harwood, who spins and hits the jumper. You got to be creative when you get the ball down inside in that zone. Good quick move that time. Nice pivot by the big fella. Herman for three. Missed it. Spain had the rebound. Tosses it to Albert. Harwood, Iwoto, blocked by Patterson, Powell the rebound. He was challenged that time by Patterson. Iwoto rushed it again, maybe just a little bit. On the block, Patterson, quick one-hander, won't go, the rebound to Spain. Well, both teams now shooting quickly, trigger happy. Seven-point Buccaneer lead, 14-18 to go. Anderson's left-handed. Harwood shoved by Doggett. You can see that coming. And the Bucks of East Tennessee State have been very effective with this zone in the second half. And if you look at the shooting percentages on the year, Davidson has really labored from the three-point land and really been probably average from two-point land. So this zone has really been effective. It's, it's caught them in a situation where uh, if they don't get it into that paint area, they're not going to convert. Four fouls on Robert Doggett. Corey Johnson replaces him. Johnson played well off the bench in the first half with five points. But Doggett has had the hot hand here in the second. Wodo misses the three. Shelton with a rebound. Again, that zone really bothering Davidson. Johnson with a quick three. Bang! He got it. That's a two. They say the foot was just inside the line, but the Bucks lead again is nine. Johnson, the guy from Tennessee, the sharpshooter, huh? Hardin County scored 74 points in one high school game. Amazing number. Amazing number. 74 points. Got over 62 other times. There's the feed to Harwood and the foul. And Harwood will draw two shots, and credit the Bucks again for making Davidson really work for that effort. They did. They really made the ball swing and work, but Chris Alpert, ever the intelligent point guard, picks it apart. Now, you really don't want to see that pass go from top to bottom against the zone. Maybe East Tennessee a little tired right now. Maybe a little lack of days to go giving Tony Patterson a blow right now, Alan LaForce is. East Tennessee has to be careful. They have to make that zone work. They have to play with their feet, keep the ball on the perimeter. Harwood will get two shots, fouled in the act by Patterson, and that's three fouls on Tony Patterson. Harwood makes the first free throw. 13-28 to go, nine points for Harwood. A bunch of rebounds. He misses that one. McGuire kept it alive. And it's tossed up in the air, out of bounds. It belongs to East Tennessee State. Brandon Williams checks in for Harwood. But you got to have Williams in there. He's the go-to guy. Well, defensively, they didn't match up well. They Davidson had a big lineup, but defensively, they did not match up well at all with the smaller perimeter shooting bucks of East Tennessee State. Well, they've outscored the Davidson bench 20 to 7. That's off the foot of Iwodo. And out of bounds. Well, keep your eye on Junior Floyd. What a first half he had. They can bring him around and let him contribute offensively like he did in the first. Got it into Justin McClellan. Floyd is in there along with Corey Johnson. 
Herman and Powell, the only starters in right now for East Tennessee. Floyd with a great feed down low to Phil Powell. That was McClellan with the assist. McClellan did an excellent job. job. The drive drew the defenders, found the open man. East Tennessee State's lead, the biggest they've had, it's 10. Finley with a three. That one rimmed down on him, and Powell got the rebound. East Tennessee State can afford to sit in that zone. They've got the lead. Davidson not hitting from the outside. They just have to be careful and make sure, sure they work the zone, work their feet. Twelve and a half minutes to go. A lot of time left. Buccaneers by ten with the ball. Trying to spread it. They need to keep good floor balance. Jeff Herman. Missed the follow. East Tennessee wanted Golden. They may have a gripe. Wodo got away with a little Jackie Gleason there, didn't he? Yeah. Brandon Williams with a nice, soft turnaround jumper. Big bucket for Williams. The lead is eight. Big bucket for Davidson. A long, dry spell for the Wildcats offensively. They go to Powell. This is Corey Johnson. Doggett's on the bench with four fouls. Patterson's on the bench with three for East Tennessee State. And the foul will be against Iwodo. And the Bucks get it on the side. Team foul number three coming up on Davidson. East Tennessee spreading the floor, trying to keep some balance, looking for some one-on-one, -on -one, taking advantage of their quickness. Bucks lead it by eight. 11.43 to go. We'll take a timeout. Tending or is it not? You can't mess with the ball when it's in the cylinder, either as a defender or as an offensive player. I think East Tennessee won a defensive goal today. I think it's C, right? The ball, he got it. I believe he touched that ball. I tell you what, that's an angle call. <laughs> that is definitely an angle call. East Tennessee wanted the goal, Tim. They didn't get it. Can't be in that cylinder on that downward flight, either offensively or defensively. Buccaneers nevertheless have the ball in an eight-point lead, just over 11 and a half to go. Leslie Brunn, big 6'7", 230-pound junior, getting his first action tonight for the Bucs. The Bucs still spreading the floor, trying to take advantage of the quickness, dribble penetration skills that they have. McClellan penetrates and buries the little eight-footer. Big bucket, Justin McClellan. Clock was running down. He knew where the hoop was. He knew what to do with it. East Tennessee State's lead again, 10. Boy, that zone has really given Davidson some trouble. Harwood all the way. Holiday shot, missed it. Finally tipped up and in by Brandon Williams. What an athlete. When you get three pops at it, Something good can happen, and Williams had the third try. Nice one-handed tip, huh? The lead again, eight. Junior Floyd with the basketball. Buccaneers trying to do the same thing to Davidson that UT Chattanooga did here a week ago tonight. Beat them on their home floor. You want to be patient offensively. You don't want to lose your momentum. It's a fine line. Oh, oh my. Corey Johnson, what a move he put and what a touch. He hasn't lost his momentum, has he? Brandon Williams misses the little soft one-hander. They hit the floor. The ball goes out of bounds off the hands of Leslie Brunn. And Davidson gets it back down 11 now, 60 to 49 after the three by Corey Johnson. Big George Spain coming in the game. He can give the Wildcats some offense in and around the paint. They got a fresh 35 second clock, Randy, and they probably need to take their time and get the best possible look at the hoop they can. And the conversion here is very important. Alpert with the ball out front. Three-point field goals. Look at this. Eight out of 14 East Tennessee. Davidson zip for seven. Davidson really hasn't shot the three effectively all year. There's one. They finally get their first one by Ray Midland. You motivate someone when you say that they haven't shot it well, don't you? Justin McClellan takes it in. It's going to count. 
Justin McClellan, another in a series of Buccaneers. Mike did a really played well off that bench. Big bench play for Coach Allen LaForce. Three guys have done an excellent job. McClellan being the latest. He's beat Davidson two times down the floor now off the dribble. He got the basket on the right side. He gets the basket on the left side. Gets a chance for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Makes it work. McClellan's got five off the bench, and all five have come in the last two or three minutes. As Tennessee's lead is 11 again. Nullified that three by Midland for Davidson. People forget the old-fashioned way to get three. It's just as effective. Harwood partially blocked. I believe Shelton got a hand on it. Williams missed the follow dunk, and here comes Corey Johnson. The Shelton. Whoa! What a move by Titus Shelton! Corey Johnson, that was a great look by Corey Johnson. He he really saw the floor well. He forced this time out. That was a basket that Davidson couldn't respond to, and they definitely need a timeout. The Buccaneers really pouring it on here. 9.06 to go, a timeout for the Wildcats. They trail it 65-52, and we'll be back to Davidson in a moment. Davidson highlights his passing skills. Execution of a three-on-one transition hoop is excellent. He looks the defender off. Goes left, passes right, and I'll tell you what, from the other camera angle, it's the same thing. <laughs> Never changes. Good camera work. He hung in there, didn't he? He took the charge. <laughs> About 69% from the field in the second half for the Bucks. That might win you some games, huh? Sure will. Might win them this one. Where they play defense, though, it's giving them that opportunity. Long rebound by Justin McClellan. Again, the miss and the one shot only. They pack it in defensively, inviting the perimeter shot by the Wildcats. Everything falling right for the Buccaneers right now. Corey Johnson with his third three. Tennessee long rifle has lit it up here in the second half. 68-52, Buccaneers by 16. Harwood inside, and that's the first bucket in a while for Davidson. That's the first mistake uh, East Tennessee has made defensively, allowing the baseline against the zone. Turnover gives it back. Harwood again, and he turned it over right into the hands of Justin McClellan. Not a good pass. Passing to the big man on the move in the crowd. Tough. Got to have great hands, spectacular hands. Leslie Brunn, he'll shoot a 50-footer, and the <laughs> Leslie Brunn is only averaging one point a game. Everything's going right for the Bucks. Oh, big fella shot a line drive, didn't he? He shot a smoking oh, arrow God. right through the arms of Big George Spain. He smoked him, didn't he? Oh, he did. Good. He said, in your face, big fella. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. That ball didn't have one inch of arc, <laughs> did it? <laughs> uh, didn't need it. It just found the hole. Uh, Leslie Brun with a free throw. Why not? Hey, listen. Three-point play for Leslie Brun. Another one of Coach LaForce's <laughs> bench players converting, huh? That's been the difference in this basketball game, the bench play for East Tennessee State. 17-point Buccaneer lead. George Spain spinning in trouble. Williams with a long three. He missed it. Midland and Spain fight for the rebound. Here's Alpert. Midland for three. Good hustle by Harwood. Davidson hustling well, moving the ball in the perimeter. They're not forcing shots, but they're just not getting anything to go down. Harwood for three. He missed it. Spain with a rebound. And he missed it. Out of bounds to East Tennessee State. Boy, there's really a lid on the bucket right now for the Cats. There certainly is. And when George Spain misses one, he got a clean, clear look on the baseline. The big guy shooting 66% misses. You know that um, ice is on the shooters for the Wildcats. Corey Johnson, there's the double team. McClellan helps him. McClellan all the way. Leslie Brown with five points off the bench for the big junior. Well, I tell you what, East Tennessee, they need to bottle whatever they gave their bench players prior to this game and bring it out. Albert misses. 
Got his own rebound. And Braun hammered it. He didn't care. He's got five points. He's got five fouls to use, too. <laughs> he sure does. And he used all of that one, didn't he? Well, a big guy should make guards pay for coming down there. Chris Alpert, tough, heady kid. Walk on here at Davidson. But he gets into the neighborhood, and the big guys, they want to own the neighborhood. Alpert misses the first run at it. Follows. Now, he's five foot eleven. He's in the tree neighborhood now. Big Leslie lets him know that uh, this is my territory, fellow. First shot by Alfred is good off that left hand. Boy, I, I had not noticed that there were this many left handers. They are. Coach Bob Mc... McKillop likes the left handers, recruits them actively. Two out of two for Alfred. Mark McGuire will check in for Davidson. Of course, I like left handers or right handers that can shoot. How about you, Coach? I like them all. You put it in the hole, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But there is, I believe what uh, Coach McKillop says about the left handers. It is different. You react to them differently defensively. <laughs> Justin McCollum all over the floor here in the second half. 19 point lead for the Buccaneers, 6 18 to go. They whip it around against that zone. Iwodo, good skip pass. They work it on the baseline, and Williams buried the jumper. Now, that was the best ball movement Davidson's had against that zone. Good ball movement, but they've gotten some shots. And just like, as you said, there's been a lid on the basket. That time, Williams made sure it went down. A little pressure up the floor by Davidson, but uh, going to take some steals, some knockaways, some easy hoops, and getting to the foul line to get back in this game. Junior Floyd misses the long three. Alan LaForce is livid. He didn't want that shot. No, not when you're up this many with five minutes to go on the road. You have to be patient, take your time, and utilize all of the clock that you can. Alfred, nice move off the glass and in. That makes it a 15-point game now. Really, you can't complain if you're Alan LaForce too much about Floyd because his shooting from out there put him in this position in the first half. Floyd is foul going in, so Junior Floyd will draw two shots. And you like to see that from a player. In this part of the game, Coach LaForce over talking to him right now, hey, that's okay to take it to the hoop. It's just the quick jump shots that sometimes have a tendency to bother coaches. But take it to the hoop, see what happens. You cut the distance down, it's easier opportunity to get to the foul line where he's at right now. It all makes sense offensively. What really makes sense is if that three-pointer had gone in, Allen would have said, great shot. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Wouldn't have been a word said, would it? Coaches are funny. They like to coach. That's their job. 13 points for Floyd, all of them in the first half. And he got it. Junior Floyd with 14. That's his first points of this half. 61% foul shooter. When you get on the road, Randy, you have to have good bench production. You have to hit the perimeter shot. And that's what they've done, East Tennessee State, and that's why they're ahead. Floyd with a second of two. Missed it. Anderson with a rebound. Iwoto to Harwood. They tap it loose from him. Iwoto's got it, but a foul against East Tennessee. Somebody reaching in, and that stops the clock with 5.06 to go. That time Davidson off the missed shot comes down the floor very quickly. Doesn't let East Tennessee State set up defensively. Quick pass me Woto inside to Hargood. And big crowd. A lot of reaching. Iwoto makes the first one. Iwoto has a, a body that you can see if he stays on the weights. Will fill out. He's just a sophomore. He runs like a deer. From Cameroon. I think Ray Minlin also from Cameroon. Two for two for Iwodo. 76-62. The lead 14. Davidson with some pressure. Junior Floyd takes the pass. And there's the reach in by Wodo. That's team foul number seven on Davidson, and that's going to put Floyd back on the line with a one and one. 
Well, at this point in the ball game, you have to go for every steal. You have to look at every defensive opportunity you can generate. Uodo thought he had a chance at that steal. Stops the clock, which is not bad if you're the Davidson Wildcats. And so Floyd, who hit one out of two here a moment ago, goes back to the line with 4.55 to go. The contest, his team up 14. Got it. Good touch for the big man. This is the one that counts, though. This is the second one. Davison will trade two at their end for one at East Tennessee State's end. If you trade baskets two and two, obviously you'll never catch up. Floyd with 15 points. That one rolled around and off the there. Williams gets the rebound. Wildcats have to beat De uh, East Tennessee back down the floor and create some easy shots. Don't let them set the, in this zone defense. Speed, Williams missed the shot, kept alive. Harwood goes up. He's got it. He muscles it up. Run. Sent it into the nickel seats, but the foul will be on Junior Floyd of East Tennessee. Quinn Harwood has done a very good job this evening. He's hustled. He's been all over the floor. He got six points in the first half, but he's been all around for the Davidson Wildcats. He stays right in there. There is a sea of navy blue jerseys around him. <laughs> Leslie had fun with that one. Floyd got the foul before. Brun, Shelton, Johnson, and Floyd all come out. So fresh legs for the Buccaneers. Powell, Doggett, Patterson, and Herman. Now Doggett has four fouls. Patterson is playing with three for East Tennessee State. Patience is the byword for East Tennessee State right now with 436. Plenty of patience. Coming up uh, next here on Sports South Tennessee Tech in Southeast Missouri. That'll be live at night. Look for Davidson to jump into a full court pressure on a make. Harwood made him 77 64, the lead 13. McClellan's got it. Here's Doggett. Keep the ball moving. Keep it off the floor, in the air as much as possible. Utilize all the clock. There's a steal. Midland's got it. The lead is 11 with 4.16 to go. Davidson putting the pressure on in the backcourt. Basket here for East Tennessee State is huge. Just simply as a momentum keeper, Randy, that's all. Just to keep the momentum going their way. They're on the road. The crowd now is getting into the game for Davidson. Patterson missed the shot. The foul will be against Davidson after the shot. The foul was on Midland. And that one will send Jeff Herman to the free throw line. That's a break for East Tennessee. Pretty good foul shooter. He struggled a bit this year, but in his career, pretty good foul shooter, Jeff Herman. Those Actually, the, McClellan's going to go to the line. Those are the guys you want on the foul line. But Ray Minlin at 6'3", probably 6'2 and a half, maybe in there fighting, scrapping for everything he can. It's caught with a little pushing off, if a you, little equalizer, trying to take advantage of lack of size. If you play the percentages, McClellan's a better foul shooter, 71%. He's one out of one tonight. Good rotation. He got that one. That was a smooth release, smooth shot. The lead is 12 with 3.52 to go. Another big free throw for Justin McClellan. And he got it. And we'll take a timeout. Under four minutes to go. Still a lot of time left. The Buccaneers lead Davidson by 13. We'll be back. Has gone to Cameroon. Ray Midland, one of those players from Cameroon, pays dividends by jumping in a passing lane and simply beats Justin McClellan down the floor for an easy two. Some more plays like that, Randy, could bring the Wildcats back into this ball game, but they have to do it quickly. East Tennessee's been into the zone the entire second half. They played almost the entire second half in a zone, and it has really caused Davidson problems. Almost a big steal for Justin McClellan. There's Bob McKillop. 
3.38 to go. Alpert with a quick three on the lip of that rim. There's Mr. Harwood. And then a reach-in foul by Jeff Herman. Well, we talked about Quinn Harwood not too long ago, how he just seems to be around the right place at the right time. He's a hustler, not a great leaper. He's got nice hands, plays hard. You know, he's one of those guys that when it's all said and done, you look at his stats, you say, geez, you know, he had a pretty good night. Harwood, his team down 13, will get two shots. Got it. 3.33, awfully lot of time left. It always helps that your big guy could go to the foul line and convert, particularly late in a ball game. That one misses. Phil Powell's got the board. Harwood has 12 rebounds on the game. Six are offensively. Robert Doggett comes out of there. East Tennessee has to be careful, maintain good spacing, no trapping situation done by the Wildcats. This is where if your teammates come into play, they have to read defensively what's happening. See the trap and come to the open spaces. Patterson flips it back to Herman with three on the shot clock. He missed it. And a shelling foul on Phil Powell, East Tennessee State. Doggett had the right idea. Patterson was wide open, but I think the pass surprised Tony a little bit. Well, Patterson, I don't think, really had a good look at the basket. He was up underneath the glass and kicked it out. I give him a lot of credit for realizing that he didn't have a shot and didn't force it. Harwood, who just tipped one out of two, will go back to the line with two more. His team down by a dozen. We just talked about him and how he gets his points and how he gets to the foul line. That's all. He's got to make them, though. Not good at this point in the ball game. Not good at all. Only one of his last three. His team still down by a dozen. He's got 12 points, 12 rebounds. Pretty good blue-collar night for Harwood. He makes the second. And Cisco Iwoto comes into the ball game. We call him Cisco because his first name is Narcisse. And Harwood, 74% foul shooter on the year, second on the Davidson team, and he's the guy you'd want on the foul line outside of Williams. Doggett had it slapped away. Anderson quickly. Finland against Patterson. Missed it, and McClellan got the rebound. Davidson's got it back. Here's Iwoto. Anderson. Iwoto for three. A big, big bucket for Narcisse Iwoto. Cisco struggled most of the ball game, but I tell you what, he made his teammates happy with that one. He drilled it. It's an eight-point game, 231 to go. And East Tennessee State wants a timeout. We'll take it. A lot of time left. It's an eight-point ball game. But we come back to Davidson. Stay with us. East Tennessee point lead evaporate. They didn't convert offensively. They had some turnovers. And three-point shots by Davidson cut that lead into si single digits, Randy, for the first time since almost 10 minutes to go in this ball game. This team's used to a close finish, as you see. Five of the last six decided by five points or less. The Davidson. only difference was a week ago tonight when UTC came in, beat them by nine. Davidson has done a good job here in the second half, last 10 minutes of offensive rebounds. They've out-rebounded East Tennessee State 11-2 to two on the offensive glass, and that's against the zone. Dog is still complaining that Alpert's holding his jersey. He probably is. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get away with it, you don't quit till they call a foul on you. There's Doggett. And then there's the foul on Alpert. That's all right. 2.27 to go in the game. You're eight down. If you can afford a foul individually, which Alpert can, then you stop the, you stop the clock by fouling. The coach Bob McKellop knows that. They're trying to make a steal as quick as possible. But when a steal doesn't happen, you have pain. And coaching sometimes <laughs> is painful. Coach McKillop did not agree with that, needless to say. 2.27 left. It sends Robert Doggett to the line with a one-and-one. One. The next foul on Davidson puts the Bucks in the two-shot bonus, and Doggett buries the first one. 
You have to keep sending them to the foul line. If not, the clock evaporates. You have to make them earn it at the foul line or get a steal. Two big free throws by Robert Doggett. His team up 10 again. Iwodo in the corner. Here's Anderson. He can put it up from out there. Anderson, long shot. Won't go. Harwood, another offensive rebound. And Harwood has been all over that glass. He has been so good for Davidson rebounding line. There's the lob to Patterson for the easy layup. 83-71, the lead 12. That's a coach killer that play is at this point in the ball game. And the foul going in. One player we have not heard a lot from in the last few moments is George Spain, who spent a lot of time on the Davidson bench. Certainly has, and probably because of the zone that East Tennessee State is playing, Bob McKillop knows that it's going to be very tough to get the ball inside where he's most effective. He wants as many shooters on the floor as he can get, hopefully, to knock down a couple shots. 147 to go. Big free throws by Alfred. He made it. He's a 72% foul shooter of the year. He gets another. A chance to chop this thing to 10. Full court pressure on a make or a miss. A couple traps. Look for the quick steal, then a foul. Two for two for Chris Alford. He won't go back in. And Brandon Williams will sit down. Can't let anybody get long and get an easy one. You want to force the ball in the corners. And it's a Patterson who just hands it to Corey Johnson. Almost like Steve Young handing off in the backfield for the 49ers. That time Anderson and Alpert caught Corey Johnson in the corner. Committed to foul, but it was close. Now, Corey Johnson is only a 50% foul shooter. Percentage-wise, that was a good move for Davidson. But let's see if Johnson can connect here. It's amazing that a little guy could score all those points in high school. Hit the perimeter shot like he did in the second half to be a 50% foul shooter, isn't it? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't correlate. That shot looked pretty good. It just banged around, hit every conceivable part of the rim and came out on it right there. Too did much a, spin there. Did a victory dance with no victory, huh? <laughs> 0 for 2. That one worked for Davidson. 10 point game, a minute 37 to go. Got to find a way to get it in to the paint, drive it to the basket. Harwood for three. He missed it. He won over the rebound. Up and in. Cisco, nice offensive move to get that rebound. Took his time, looked it in that time. Eight point game. You know they're going to foul. So East Tennessee State is going to be forced to either win the game at the free throw line or lose it there. No question. That's the correct thing that Davidson is attempting to do. Chess match now. Just a matter of who can move the king to the right spot. Robert Doggett, who's a good foul shooter, 71%, goes to the line. He made two for two his last trip there a few minutes ago. It's easy to say foul certain people, but the ball doesn't get to so-and-so. It's tough to foul him. On the other hand, if you're East Tennessee State, you want to keep the ball in this young man's hands. You want him at that foul line. Doggett gets another. Two for two, Robert Doggett. Alan LaForce wanted a 20-second timeout. Nobody saw it. Ten-point game, a minute 17 to go. Here's Iwoto. Iwoto for three. Missed it. Alfred got the long rebound. He's Harwood. He's tough. Make him earn it. 104 to go. Davidson gets to the foul line off a second chance opportunity. Rebound to the smallest player on the floor for Davidson, Chris Alpert. But in the second half, the Wildcats have been able to convert with second chance points. They've gotten 13, Randy. Probably is one of the reasons they've been able to stay in the game. It certainly hasn't been because of their outside shooting. Quinn Harwood, averaging 12 points, almost seven rebounds a ball game, has really had a nice game. 
and he's earned every one. He has worked hard, hasn't he? He's definitely what you would describe a blue-collar basketball player. He's done it all tonight on the boards. He shot the three, made some free throws. Two for two. It's an eight-point game again, just over a minute to go. And there's Patterson's going to get another snowbird. Williams blocked it, but it still went in. And the lead is 10 under a minute to go. Alfred missed. Long rebound, he will do. 50 seconds. Got to let it go from out there or drive it. Strip to the ball, and that's going to do it because Jeff Herman is going to pull out of there and make somebody foul him, and they do with 39 seconds to go. Heads up play by Jeff Herman. Just a heads up play by the junior from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Could have gone all the way, been greedy, and tried to convert, but he used his head and pulled it out. You like to see plays like that rewarded, and he got fouled. He's got a chance to get his points, does he not? Jeff Herman with two shots up coming, his team up 10, and that one looked like one of Corey's. <laughs> Just no way it was going to go in. Sometimes, uh, if you see enough basketball, you know when the ball leaves their hands, don't you? <laughs> you sure do. That one's in. No. Not enough art. One of those line drivers. Old for two for Jeff Herman. Brandon Williams with a long three and air ball. Goes out of bounds. Bob McKillop said it was partially blocked. They're going to give it to East Tennessee with exactly 30 seconds left and a 10-point Buccaneer lead. That was a Mother May I shot. Mother May I have it back. You know, that's one of those that's you wish you wouldn't have let go. 10-point game, 30 seconds to go. Bill Powell inbounds to Corey Johnson, and Davidson's not giving up, but some of the crowd beginning to foul out here. And Corey Johnson goes back to the line where he was 0 for 2 a moment ago. Now there's somebody over in the corner singing. It's not making Coach McKillop very happy. Davidson, three of their last four on the road. East Tennessee, three of their last four at home. That does not necessarily mean anything for East Tennessee because they've actually won more games on the road in conference play than they have at home. And they're still chasing Chattanooga, Western Carolina. Best record for the tournament. So it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough uphill battle, as you said, even though they have a favorable home schedule. Corey Johnson, one out of two, two for two for Corey Johnson, and that just about ices the victory kick. A 12-point lead with 26 seconds. Harwood. This is the long with a rebound. Doggett runs it up the floor. He's fouled, and Doggett will go back to the line with two shots, and East Tennessee is going to put a big W onto their left-hand side. They're going to go 11-11 and 11 on the year, but more importantly, 7-3 and three in the Southern Conference and open up a two-game lead over Davidson in the Northern Division standings with four games left. That's mighty big because they would share the top-seeded position with UTC. One would be the top seed in the North, top seed in the South. And putting that distance between themselves and the second-place team, Davidson, is very important, as you said. East Tennessee and UT Chattanooga, the teams that have dominated this conference, they've won one of the two schools, has won seven straight tournament championships. I'll tell you what, this tournament is wide open. A lot of teams, a lot of teams have a chance to be a factor. Alfred, they let him go all the way in. A timeout for Davidson, but not really matter. With 10 seconds to go, the Bucks have a 12-point lead. Just use the timeout to set the team defensively. There's Corey Johnson, they foul him with nine seconds. What you're doing right now is really a dress rehearsal, a practice of some sorts, because the game is out of reach, and Coach McKillop understands that, but uh, he's drilling his team right now because there could be some time, some point in the future schedule where he, he will need this, and the game will be a one- or two-point game. East Tennessee releasing everybody back away from the free throw line where Corey Johnson now two of five from the line trying to get his season average if he hits here he'd be three out of six that's 50 percent <laughs> and he doesn't but it doesn't matter that's a happy young man right here 
He's played awfully well off the bench. Certainly has. The whole bench for East yeah. Tennessee has done an excellent job. Anderson follows it in at the buzzer. However, East Tennessee State comes away with a big, big win tonight over the Davidson Wildcats here in Davidson, North Carolina. 91-81, your final score that came despite at a couple of 11-point leads for the Wildcats in the first half. Great bench play for the Bucks. a 91-81 victory. For Mike Pratt in Davidson, North Carolina, this is Randy Smith. Good night, everybody.